Hi everyone, it's John from RFM Calc and today as part of our series taking a deep dive look into our key e-commerce reports, I'm talking about our custom column reports. So if I scroll down here to our custom column reports, you can see uh, they're included in every plan from our small plan and above. So small, medium, large, huge, and you can specify two columns, four columns, six columns, and 10 respectively. Uh, this custom column functionality isn't included on our free and micro plans. So this functionality has been a core part of RFM Calc since we launched. Basically what a custom column is, is an additional column or it could be part of your existing data uh, in your CSV file that you'll load to RFM Calc. And you can basically specify that column as a custom column. We'll then generate a host of additional reports for you based around the data in that column. So we'll show you monthly revenue. We'll show you uh, average time between orders. We'll show you lifetime value. We'll show you the overall revenue breakdown as well. And it basically gives you a lot of powerful insights based on the data in that particular column. Now that's really useful because there's probably data uh, that you want to know more about. So it could be something simple like uh, payment method or shipping method. You might want to know, okay, does the payment method uh, influence the lifetime revenue? Uh, does it influence the average time between orders? So you can see that really easily with the custom column reports. It also allows you to pull in other data into your CSV uh, and then report on that. So for example, you could quite easily, and we'll demonstrate in this video, um, do a little custom uh, function in your CSV to say, okay, has this order been delivered to the shipping or the billing address? And then you can do uh, a custom column report based on that new column, specifying yes or no for that value. And that, again, you can see lifetime value, you can see average time between orders, does that vary? And then you can get even more kind of complex as well. And um, it's kind of limitless. So you can potentially uh, import as well. And we'll demonstrate this, for example, your Google Analytics uh, source. So have they come through paid search? Have they come through branded paid search, generic paid search? paid social as long as you can map that data uh, and it's really simple in excel with a vlookup to say okay as long as you've got a list of orders from google analytics and a list of the channel they came through you can then map that back to your order file and then upload the file uh, to rfm calc and then you can generate custom data um, and custom reports around for example the google source which is really really useful so if we go to the faq section on the site and um, you can see if we scroll down here you get a nice kind of overview here of what custom columns are as well and some examples of how they can be used, uh, which is quite useful if you need to refer back to this. Um, the way custom columns work, we'll only process them if they contain a certain number of distinct values. So first of all, it has to have at least one uh, or more than one distinct value, I should say, so at least two. Uh, because custom columns, obviously, you need at least two values. And we say no more than 250 distinct values. So the reason for that is really just from a practical sense. When we look at the reporting charts and data tables that we generate, more than 250 becomes a bit messy. Uh, and at the same time, I think sometimes just to avoid any confusion, you know, obviously, you don't want to specify things like your order ID or a customer ID as a custom column. That doesn't make sense. Uh, to try and look at um, lifetime value and so on because you can get that in other ways from the reports. Um, so the custom column functionality isn't right for that and that's why we have kind of a hard limit on how many distinct values uh, you can have. So I think probably the easiest way to demonstrate them is just to look at a few example reports. So I'll start with this uh, Shopify report, I think, first. Um, so this is from a you know a reasonably sized Shopify site. We've got five years of data, 41 million pounds worth of uh, dollars, I should say, of revenue. So if we go down to the custom column section, so just to say this will only appear if you have any custom columns uh, specified. Uh, the first custom column we've set here is payment method. So this is a standard Shopify field. And basically you can see here, we split down month by month, all the different payment methods for this particular site. So you can see in April, 2022, Shopify payments was the biggest with one and a half million dollars of revenue. But then you've got PayPal Express, you've got Instagram as a payment method, you've got gift card and Shopify payments, buy now, pay later with Klarna. So basically, basically these are the names as Shopify determines them. We don't do anything with this data to try and you know, manipulate the names and so on. You can manipulate, of course, the column header before you upload it, uh, which this pulls through into the report directly. So obviously the column by default in, in Shopify exports is called payment method. Um, so you get a monthly breakdown. You also get orders as well, um, as well as revenue. So you can see the orders breakdown as well. And then we give you an overall breakdown. So this is quite useful um, just to see actually for all the orders on my store, 
74.5% uh, of the revenue came from Shopify payments. And you could look, this is data you could probably get elsewhere as well, but the beauty of RFM Calc is we make it really visual, really, really easy, really clear, and really easy to see that data. And then of course, you, we've got a data table as well. So you can actually just sort by revenue uh, really instantly as well, which is a big advantage over a lot of reporting platforms where you're waiting for loading and you have to click through and all kinds of things. Whereas here, once the report's generated, it's there instantly. And you can sort and you can see again, just uh, by revenue, the biggest payment methods for this particular site um, all the way down as well as the AOV as well and the total number of orders. And then under each value, we'll give you this, this percentage here as well. So you can see the percentage of total revenue and the percentage of total orders uh, this particular payment method is generated. So not only do you get obviously monthly breakdown, overall breakdown, nice data table, obviously you can export this uh, just by copying and pasting into Excel as well. We'll also give you the average lifetime value and lifetime orders based on the first order. So if we look here, what you can see is basically based on customers who place their first order with this payment method, or of course this could be any custom column. So if it's Shopify payments, there are 89,790 first time customers. Their lifetime revenue is $352.61, lifetime orders 1.83. Uh, so what you can see, which is kind of interesting, actually, uh, and again, we're getting into data now that you can't get probably from your e-commerce platform. You certainly can't get it from analytics uh, systems like Google Analytics. Uh, so PayPal Express, you can see that's fairly similar, uh, slightly lower average lifetime value, um, slightly lower average lifetime orders, but in the same ballpark as Shopify payments. But you can see Afterpay is much higher. Um, $432 lifetime revenue and 2.5 2 orders placed. So there's definitely... Um, seemingly a benefit there to getting customers to pay with Afterpay on this particular site. Now that could be for a variety of reasons. Maybe Afterpay is only offered over certain uh, order values, or maybe it's only offered to repeat customers. There could be something like that in play that obviously I, I don't know. Um, but it's very interesting to be able to look at this data and get the lifetime revenue based on the custom column. And then if we go further down, we'll also show you the uh, average mean time and median time is further down uh, for payment methods as well. So obviously you, with Shopify in particular, you'll end up with kind of weird combinations of payment methods where it, it groups them like this. So you might not have, so for example, these two here, there weren't any second, uh, first to second order gaps uh, because nobody placed the first order, then placed the second order, uh, or no one placed the first order with these two payment methods and then went on to place the second order. So you can sort like this though and see uh, basically the, how the gaps vary as well between payment methods, which can be useful. Uh, and you, we've got the median as well, because sometimes it's better to look at median potentially than mean, but you've got the option here. So this takes obviously a little bit of digesting, particularly when the data is not particularly neat that's coming through. So we've got some better examples from, uh, from a different e-commerce platform later, but obviously the way Shopify groups payments, they do come through in a, in a bit of a, a convoluted way. Um, if they, you know, where they can be grouped together like this. Um, we've then got a shipping method in exactly the same way. Um, so again, by month, revenue orders overall. So you can see free shipping, ground shipping, uh, second biggest. You've got a nice breakdown there. And again, you can just sort this table by revenue and see what your biggest shipping methods are. Again, these two columns are native in Shopify. So you can get some interesting data out of that. Uh, and then the final one we've done for this particular site is if I just go down, we've got accepts marketing. So this is kind of interesting. So this is a much simpler column because there's only yes and no. They either accept marketing or they don't. So you can see based on the order, has the customer accepted marketing? Uh, and probably won't be a huge surprise to see that if we go down to the lifetime revenue, uh, that customers who do accept marketing, their lifetime revenue and lifetime orders is slightly higher. Uh, their time to purchase uh, in terms of the gap between the first and second order and second and third and fir third and fourth and so on is slightly lower as well, which you'd expect because obviously if you're able to market to these customers, you're able to target them um, with email and so on um, and really build them into your retention strategy, uh, which results here in a slightly higher lifetime revenue. So, you know, it's interesting data. It's data that's very difficult to get from other places. Uh, and that's why we include the custom column functionality. But as I say, although all those columns are native in Shopify, you can, of course, build your own columns on the CSV before you upload it to us. And then we can generate um, all these reports for whatever column you upload. It's really, really flexible. And it's a really, really powerful system. So to demonstrate that, let's have another look uh, at a different site, this time a Magento site. 
so you can see this is a smaller site we've got uh orders running from september 2018 to august 2022 uh, about two and a half million turnover in that period so if we go down to custom columns the first one we've got is payment method um which again is a default um column in magento in the magento order export so you can see we've got paypal express and klarna here uh, you'll see magento uses the internal code rather than a, an english kind of full text readable name when it exports the orders and that's fine obviously as long as you know what it is um, it's very easy to interpret so again this is pretty straightforward you can see month by month um, revenue and orders by each payment method you can see an overall breakdown um, and then again you can see lifetime revenue so for this site lifetime revenue is slightly higher uh, for Klarna than PayPal and you can see the average tie between orders um, varies as well so pretty similar though between both payment methods so that's kind of again standard but exactly what we did on Shopify but the same for Magento but obviously because the Magento site only has two payment methods it's a lot easier to digest because there's only two options there the next one is a little bit more interesting so this is shipped to billing address so this is a custom column that we added to the CSV before we uploaded it to RFM Calc so what this column does I've actually got the formula here because uh, we give it as an example in our FAQ section um, so you can do uh, where's it gone can I add extra data to my CSV and use this as a custom column? And yes, this is where RFM Calc becomes really powerful. So we've got a little formula here for Magento. So because Magento um, stores the shipping address and the billing address in a single column each, it's quite easy to do a little match. There's the code if you're curious and um, to say, are they the same? Uh, and then we add that in a new column called ship to billing address. And yes means yes, uh, the shipping address is the same as the billing address and no means no obviously the shipping address is different to the billing address and um, so you can see for this site predominantly people ship to their shipping address which is what you'd expect and um, but you get all the data again so in terms of revenue and orders by month overall you can see 91% uh, of revenue for this site comes from customers who are shipping to their uh, billing address uh, and 9% goes to a different shipping address so that's kind of interesting to know and then you can compare again the lifetime revenue the average time between orders you get all that advanced level data based on that custom column which is quite powerful so for the final example we've got a google source channel and um, now this really shows how powerful custom columns can be so a lot of our users uh, use custom columns in this way so basically to achieve this i obviously had my order file from magento i then exported the full orders uh, list from google analytics showing the uh, acquisition channel for each order and um, i then i basically just split that down into two columns so you can export a csv from google analytics this was from universal analytics and uh, it will export various additional columns and you have to do it 5,000 orders at a time uh, but basically compressed all that into one csv with two columns order id and the acquisition channel based on what google analytics was telling me you then do a simple v lookup and to basically add this google short source channel column onto your original order csv v lookup to a second sheet uh, which then pulls through the google source channel against that and then once that's in your order csv and uploaded to rfm calc we can process that data as we would for any other custom column um, so basically the more data you can get into your order csv the more powerful insights we can give you and uh, there's naturally a little bit of work on your side some platforms make this easier than others some platforms have a lot of additional data which you could export or we can generate custom column reports for uh, magento doesn't have too much really uh, but again just by using this little bit of excel uh, and a little v lookup we can basically get the google source channel by order into the order file and then that allows us to process the custom column report for that column so you can see here we've got a nice monthly split in terms of revenue by channel so branded page search direct generic page search organic search obviously this site has customized channels and uh, so things like paid social aren't standard and uh, obviously that's been set up for this site um, as best practice in google analytics to split out the channels a little bit from the defaults uh, but you can see monthly revenue and uh, monthly orders overall revenue as well and look this is what you can get from google analytics as well but it's quite nice to kind of get this really visual clear overview and the same with the data table as well so you can sort instantly by which are your most popular channels in terms of uh, order generation so you can see here generic paid search is slightly ahead of branded paid search then direct organic search email and so on um but what 
then becomes really, really powerful is you can get the lifetime value data uh, and average time between orders that we discussed before. So if I just uh, flip this by first time customers, you can see the difference in channels between uh, the average lifetime revenue and average lifetime orders. So you can see generic and branded page search, actually pretty similar. Branded is slightly higher as you'd expect. You'd expect that to be uh, repeat customers if you're still in the growth stage, or at least customers who know who you are, which is always a good starting point in terms of intent on an e-commerce site. Uh, but actually, uh, organic is slightly higher as well. And that's potentially for a number of reasons. Most likely, this site doesn't really rank for much outside their brand. And uh, so that's why branded paid search and organic are similar. Uh, but then you can see, as expected for email, the lifetime revenue and lifetime orders is slightly higher uh, if an order is placed, um, a first time order is placed using email. So they're potentially, let's say, subscribe to your mailing list. They've got intent. Maybe they've had a 10% off discount, uh, which they've subscribed to the mailing list for. And then obviously that's a signal of intent to go on and buy, hence the higher lifetime revenue. Um, so it's really interesting to be able to see that. And again, you can see the average time between orders as well. Uh, between the different channels. You've got that absolute granular data in terms of not just overall, which is really, really useful on its own, but to actually be able to see by Google channel and uh, the average lifetime uh, revenue, but also the time between orders, uh, the average time between orders. So we've got the mean and the median as always um, by channel as well, uh, which is really, really interesting data. And you can take a deep dive into that and you can say, okay, um, not only is this the return, from this particular channel, which you can see obviously in Google Analytics fairly easily, but you could also say, okay, actually the return based on a per order basis isn't great, but the lifetime revenue, uh, lifetime value from this channel is much higher. Uh, the average time between orders is shorter. So this is actually a channel we should invest more in. And it allows you to make those decisions. And um, so there's a lot more thinking, I would say, with, with custom columns. There's a lot more to kind of think about uh, on your side as the user in terms of interpreting this data, whether you're an agency interpreting it for a client, whether you're working in, in the e-com team interpreting it for the board, let's say. Uh, there's definitely more to think about here, but there's a, you can generate a huge amount of insight with custom columns uh, based on the, the value in that custom column and that you're setting versus the overall kind of lifetime value, average time between orders data that you're getting for the for the e-com store as a whole. Uh, so to be able to split that by Google channel, for example, or even by payment method or other kind of custom column values is really, really powerful. And like I say, you can literally specify anything in a custom column you want, as long as it's got at least two values uh, in your CSV. And as long as there's not more than 250 values currently, um, that's the maximum as long as it's not more than that we can generate the reports for you uh, and give you all this insight simply by specifying a, a, a custom column when you generate the report great so i think that's everything on custom columns so hopefully now you've got a better idea of how custom columns work and how you can literally pass any data in a column to rfm calc and we'll generate all this data for you monthly breakdowns um, lifetime value average time between orders based on that custom column. So that could be anything. It can be payment method, shipping method. You can get a bit more advanced and hooking data from other channels. Um, so you can add your Google source channel as I've demonstrated here. You can even do it by product SKU as well. If you want to see lifetime uh, value by product, uh, a product SKU combination, if you're able to access that into your order CSV as well. So it's a huge amount of additional data that you can generate. So hopefully that's been useful. Um, really appreciate you watching. Obviously, if you've got any questions, feel free to visit RFM Calc and just click the contact button and get in touch. But if not, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks, everyone.